Welcome back. Carnivore Soldier here, back in the saddle. Today we're talking about carnivore dogs, and specifically my dog, Duke. He's my service dog and my companion for years. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of him. That's Duke when he's working. This is Duke when he's playing, which he'd rather be playing all the time, but he loves to work as well. Anyway, so Duke, you know, he's, he's now on the carnivore diet for months and doing exceptionally well. And I want to start off by talking about why I put Duke on a carnivore diet and what my thought process was. So it all goes back to, um, you know, I was feeling after 90 days on this diet, I was feeling amazing. I had more energy, you know, I wasn't aching all the time. I had lost weight, no allergies, like all these things that were changing were positive. My, my teeth were better. My gums were better. Everything was getting better. Nothing was trending down. And I thought, well, that makes sense because I'm a carnivore and I should be eating this. But then I looked at Duke and I'm like, man, look at those incisors. That guy, is a, he's a straight up carnivore. I mean, if, there's no reason he should not be eating like this. So, and then it brought me back to a, a conversation I had years ago when I had a friend who owned a, an auto shop out in the country. And I used to take my Jeep there to get work done. And he had this dog, the shop dog, named Pumpkin. And Pumpkin was a boxer. She was cute as could be really fit, always shiny. And I asked him like, hey, you know, what are you feeding Pumpkin? She looks great. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean feeding? She hunts in the field every morning and every day. She just goes out and gets what she wants to eat. And she brings it back here and eats it. And I was like amazed. I was like, wow, I guess so. You know, dogs actually do that. So I thought, well, there's gotta be something to this because that dog looked great. I feel great. I'm, I'm gonna look into seeing, you know, I know out in the wild, there's not a single dog eating cooked carrots, rice, and potatoes, uh, you know, that's eating that out in the wild. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, domestic animals have a high rate of cancer, I knew that, and higher rate than the wild animals do. And I also know that they're the only animals that are unfortunate enough to be fed by us. You know, it's, they're getting processed kibble, they're getting all this terrible food. So I thought, well, I'm gonna look into seeing how to put Duke on a carnivore diet. So I started, you know, Googling it, finding out, and I found it, a couple channels where people were actually doing it, and I learned how. So I'm here to share that knowledge with you guys. Uh, the first thing I did is I went out and I bought a grinder, a commercial grade grinder on Amazon. I'll put a link below so you guys can see, you know, what, what that's all about and if you need one. Uh, then I went and bought 10 pound bags of chicken quarters, quarter thighs. And all I do is I grind up the thighs and put them in uh, one pound containers. I bought a bunch of these uh, one pound containers. I'll put that in the link down below too from Amazon. And I stack them in the freezer and Duke eats two pounds a day because he's 130 pounds and the dog has never been healthier. I can tell you right now, some of the things that I've seen change in him, his coat, it's exceptionally shiny. You can see the picture right there. It was, it's, it's exceptionally shiny. Uh, people comment on it all the time and even my son did when he first said, what are you doing to Duke? I'm like, nothing, I'm not, you know, they ask, you know, do you wash him? Is he just freshly washed? No, I wash him, you know, once every, you know, couple weeks. He's an indoor dog, he doesn't get dirty. The other thing is he doesn't have the dandruff like he used to have. I don't think he sheds as much and he definitely doesn't itch as much. He doesn't scratch his itches very often. So I think if there are allergies in the skin, they've probably gone down. Uh, another thing I would say is his poop. His poops have changed amazingly, just like ours do. You know, we digest almost everything we eat on this diet. Guess what? Dogs do too. So his poops went from huge, giant, stinky bombs to these small, firm poops that turn white because he's digesting everything he eats. And the white, I believe, is the excess calcium from the bones because I do grind all the bones and everything. And, you know, I feed it to him raw as nature intended. Anyway, the, um, the poops are white, so they're super easy to find. They're really easy to pick up. So that has been a benefit. Uh, also his energy levels are really great. And you know, for a seven and a half year old Great Dane, that's usually when they start winding down, but not this guy. He is ready to run and gun at any time. He's just really uh, a high energy dog. I mean, for a Great Dane. Great Danes are pretty passive, but when we play, he is on and he's ready to play. He shows no sign of slowing down, very muscular. Uh, my neighbor actually, did the same thing. My neighbor went carnivore as well. Now he's put his dog on carnivore and his dog 
is a, a Doberman, and he said, man, I love the way my dog's looking. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I mean, looks like a show dog, right? So those are, and the, the last thing is his teeth. Teeth are clean, they're strong, they're healthy. My vet used to always get on my case about brushing his teeth, and I could never do it because he would, oh, there he is behind me. He would, you know, whenever I put a toothbrush in his mouth, he started licking it, and it was just a pain in the butt. Now my vet's like, well, his teeth look great, and I haven't done anything other than feed him the food that, you know, nature intends him to eat and give him a, a rawhide every now and then, and that's all I do. Uh, so anyway, it's been a great experience. I recommend it to anyone to try it out. Uh, I'll have links below to a video that I f followed to learn how to grind the uh, chicken thighs and to the grinder and to the containers I use. Thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow this community. Also, I do have a Discord server, and the Discord server is free. You just click on the link below and you can join. Uh, it's kind of like a private social media. It's really easy to use. I have a channel for carnivore pets you can put on there. I have a channel for uh, sharing recipes, channel for battle buddies that need help, someone needs you know um, encouragement or whatever. I have a, a motivational channel where I share my story. People can share their stories, my pictures, uh, before and after pictures, and continuing because I'm not done yet. Uh, so there's a lot of great information there. It's free. Uh, super easy to join. You just click on it, make an account, and you're in. Encourage you to do that. There's also a voice channel where we can actually talk, where you can talk to me. And, you know, maybe down the road we'll even do a local meetup if you're here in the uh, Austin area because that's where I'm at. So, anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, next week, stay tuned because I'm going to teach you all some Texas secrets on how to reverse sear a ribeye that I learned from a pit master in Cooper's Barbecue in Atlanta, Texas, which is basically one of the best you can ever get. You're going to go to Cooper's, you're going to drop 70 bucks on that ribeye. I'm going to show you how to do it at home on the cheap. And it's amazing every time. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.